So <laughs> please give her a warm welcome. Good morning, friends. Let me add my own words of welcome to all of you and to thank Carol for setting the tone for the service. Thank you, Carol, for the beautiful meditation and the treatment of oneness. And I'd also like to add my words of welcome to those tuned in to this service on the World Wide Web. So it's a bright and sunny Sunday morning following on the showers of blessings we've been having recently. Um, so it's good to be here and it's good to be home, even if I do leave tomorrow, but I'll be back. Don't worry, I turn up on Sunday every Sunday, so I'm here with you. So I'd like to begin this morning's message with a little experiment, okay? So, if you're wearing a watch, a bracelet, a ring, um, I'd like to ask you if you could place it on your other hand. So, I'm going to do likewise. All right. Or place the ring on another finger. And just leave it there for a while. Okay? So, for most of us, myself included, we have a set routine that we follow every day, and it would probably go something like this. We wake up, we spend some time in the morning, you know, communing with God, and then we get started on getting dressed, eating breakfast, and heading out the door to join the line of traffic to get to work or a place of business. And for the most part, we drive the same route daily. Sounds familiar? Yes. See some people nodding as if we're on autopilot, and we get to work to begin another day. We become so attached to the known that we hardly ever venture outside this path. It is as if we're inside of a box, and because we know where the boundaries are, we feel safe. It is this attachment to the known that keeps us from creating the life we truly desire. And it can be frightening to step into the unknown, yet that is where all new creation must take place. So if you are ready to do so, then join me as we explore this morning, stepping out into the unknown and loving it. Are we ready? Yes. Yes. So for those of you who are really having a difficulty keeping the watch and the ring on the opposite hand on which you have placed it, then you can switch it back. But, <laughs> really, but for those of you who want to really challenge yourself to go with the change, then let's leave it there until the end of the message, okay? Let's look at what it takes to begin this journey of stepping into the unknown. But before we begin any journey, we have to clarify exactly where we are and where we want to be. So, some of the first questions we should ask ourselves is, am I living with a sense of adventure or a sense of fear? Hmm? Think about that. Do I feel that each day is pretty much the same as the day before? Is there a sense of resignation? Like, oh well, these are the cards that life has dealt me. Or do we live in anticipation of the possibility of learning, seeing, doing, or even being something new? Do you truly realize that you are living in a state of grace, able to co-create your experiences by using your very birthright, your connection with the divine? Do you? Once we have answered these initial questions, then we can begin to look at how it is we will step out into the unknown. Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones, author a New Thought Luminary, in his book entitled The Art of Uncertainty, How to Live in the Mystery of Life and Love It, poses the question, and I quote, what if we could learn how to be at peace with I don't know and embrace the possibility that the future is full of mystery, excitement, and unlimited opportunity, would we be willing to explore this? Dr. Jones goes on to state that, 
in order for us to move forward on this pathway and create new experiences, we cannot keep creating from within the field of what we already know. That is, if we use only the past as our reference point, then we will find that we are only creating new versions of the same old thing." End quote. While none of us knows for sure what our future holds, we know that our consciousness is the filter through which the limitless potential of the universe flows. Therefore, what we create in the future is a direct result of what is set in our consciousness as possible today. This we know as the law of cause and effect. Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder of this teaching, states in our Science of Mind textbook, and I quote, it has been proved that by thinking correctly and by a conscious mental use of the law of mind, we can cause it to do definite things for us, through us, end quote. The very act of thinking about what you're thinking about is the first step. Get in touch with the thinking that inspires every part of your life, your primary thought atmosphere. As Dr. Holmes also states, and I quote, what we demonstrate today, tomorrow, and the next day is not as important as the tendency which our thought is taking, the dominant attitude of our mind. End of that quote. Friends, the laws of nature have neither sentiment, feeling, or emotion, so too the law of mind. Like the laws of nature, it is always impersonal. It will respond to everyone. In seeing the law in action, I'm reminded of a mother who took her little boy to church. While in church, the little boy said, Mommy, I have to pee. The mother said to the little boy, It is not appropriate to say the word pee in church, dear. So from now on, whenever you have to pee, just tell me that you have to whisper. The following Sunday, the little boy went to church with his dad and during the service said to his father, Daddy, I have to whisper. The father looked at him and said, Okay, just whisper in my ear. <laughs> Law of cause and effect, rightly demonstrated. Friends, Author Joel Goldsmith, in his book, The Heart of Mysticism, implores us, and I quote, acknowledge Christ in the midst of you, and then acknowledge Christ in the midst of all individual being, human, animal, vegetable, or mineral, end quote. He reminds us that the Christ present is present in the weather, the stones on the ground, at the bottom of the sea, and in every, and the very air we breathe. Therefore, we're never outside of the realm of its care, direction, protection, and love. Is it necessary then for us to know the whys and hows of everything? Do you think so? For us to move forward in times of uncertainty? Indeed, no. If we take the decision to never leave our comfort zone or to settle for our current conditions, then a vital part of us, our soul, begins to wither and die because of our divine purpose is not, if our divine purpose is not being fulfilled. And here I'd like to share with you an article from um, a, a personal blog by Justina Bakatu, who says, here's the truth about stepping out of your comfort zone that no one talks about. She says, the magic happens outside of your comfort zone, or does it? And I'd just like for you to listen. It was a chilly March evening when I landed at JFK. Was it chilly though? Honestly, I don't remember. After spending nine hours in a plane, crammed with Russian tourists and Brighton Beach locals, 30 excruciating minutes on the border, and then messing about the airport for an hour with no Wi-Fi signal, trying to find the people who were supposed to pick me up, my mind was too busy to register small things like the weather. Welcome to the United States, enjoy your stay. The jolly line, pronounced with a heavy Russian accent by one of the flight attendants, was echoing in my brain. She may as well have welcomed me to Mars. I couldn't have cared less. Because to me, it wasn't the destination that mattered. It was the fact that after this, my life would never be the same. 
She says, no, don't let this intimate description of my first few hours in the promised land, quote, throw you off. The details are not important here. My goal is to talk about a universal experience you and others have faced many times in the span of your lives, the experience that can be delicately fitted into the following line, magic happens outside of your comfort zone. I have to admit that stepping out of my comfortable bubble and into the unknown didn't make me less cynical than before, but there's always a but. I can't deny the goodness it brought me. So it's naturally, experiencing such a revelation made me feel the need to share it with someone. So let me convince you to take chances more often. Because ultimately, choosing to do something new, go someplace new, or be someone new means to single yourself out from everything and everyone you were familiar with before. Being outside of your comfort zone will sometimes make you feel incredibly vulnerable because you're no longer in the know, because you're afraid to make mistakes, even though you're doing something for the very first time. Stepping in the unknown will most likely make you regret it at some point. It will make you ponder about all the things you left behind, all the good things you might have lost. But because all of these harsh, awful experiences will get you closer to understanding the real meaning of that promised magic that happens outside of your comfort zone, then you will discover for yourself along the way the fact of how many great ideas your mind can fathom in solitude, how it finds the most brilliant answers to nearly impossible problems when left alone to sink or swim, and the fact of how open your heart can be to new experiences, new people, and new ways of thinking and doing and how that openness leads you to create bonds stronger than ever before. Yes, friends, magic happens outside your comfort zone. End of that article. And so, as Dr. Holmes states in the Science of Mind textbook, nature will not let us stay in any one place too long. She will let us stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary to the unfolding and advancement of the soul. We can all take lessons from a nestling bird when it is about to fly for the first time. It knows instinctively that it knows how to fly. Since infinite intelligence, working as instinct, directs the bird, that's why an eagle literally kicks its young out of the nest for it to fly, at times we ourselves may need that nudge for us to move out since we know that the same intelligence operating as instinct in the bird knows how to support us and sustain us. Yet while we know this to be true at a conscious level, we often choose to remain in a situation, perhaps it's a relationship that is not working, or a job for which the joy and the passion has long ago ceased to exist. What keeps us from moving on? The fear that we feel, which is often associated with a loss of some kind. For example, if we fear the loss of a title, perhaps a job title, um, then the undesired change can push us into a world of uncertainty, resulting in sometimes for perhaps devastating experiences. But Goldsmith also in his book, The Heart of Mysticism, states, where there is no longer fear in world consciousness, there will be no wars, greed, lust, or anger. And false ambitions disappear with the disappearance of fear. End of that quote. Friends, everything that we could want is on the other side of fear. We must have courage to move towards what we fear, and courage is not just the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fair, and that is our faith. For most of us, the tendency then is to resist change and to remain with what is familiar because we're comfortable with it. But it is only that infinite intelligence, that energy we call life, that never changes. It is only the form in which it momentarily manifests itself that changes. Therefore, the next thing to do to step into the unknown is to choose to do so. 
As Dr. Holmes tells us in Living the Science of Mind, we already have all the faith we will ever need. As practitioners of truth and awakened individuals, we can exercise our choice whether we, as Dr. Jones in The Art of Uncertainty calls it, mindlessly react to our fears or mindfully respond to our fears. When we mindlessly react, we oftentimes act irrationally, allowing our minds to run away with our fears, while if we had stopped to face them and mindfully think about how we can respond, then we might see that the things we fear, once we shed the light of truth on them, it loses its power to scare us. Studies show that persons who respond rather than react are more effective communicators, better problem solvers, and overall happier people because their minds are trained to think rather than to just fly off the handle. And I know that none of us here reacts in that way. We don't fly off the handle. <laughs> we are further reminded that it is important to realize that beneath all emotions, including fear, lies the authentic self, our God self, patiently awaiting our recognition of its presence. It is for us to find ways to deepen our relationship with our authentic self. Our own founding minister, Dr. Elmer Lumsden, gave us this definition of fear in one of her classes. And she reinforced the point of being in touch with our authentic self. And she said, fear is a signal that the thoughts you are thinking is of a lower vibration than who you are. Let me repeat that. Fear is a signal that the thoughts you are thinking is of a lower vibration than who you are. Friends, we are called by the master teacher Jesus as he taught us in Isaiah 43 and verses 1 to 3 in the King James Version, and it says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. End of that scripture. Despite our knowing this intuitively, when we are faced with uncertainty and the I don't know what to do and how to do it, of the situations in our lives, embracing change requires deep faith. What is this deep faith and how do we know that we have it? So we're all familiar with Hebrews 11 and verse 1, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, my friends, is an inner knowing that we are connected to spirit with the all power, all presence, and all wisdom that knows what to do, when to do, and how to do it in our lives and our affairs. When we embody this deep faith, it brings a sense of comfort and inner peace to our world and helps us surrender to and trust the process of change. Learning to trust the process is a process since the unfolding of life in and of itself is a process, a sacred field where every now moment effortlessly connects with the next this is where both the past and the future connects in the present moment. And if you diligently approach them, both have information for you regarding change and uncertainty you may currently be facing. If we are not mindful, it is very easy to allow the drama in the moment to distort our lives. So please join me now in a visualization exercise which Dr. Jones recommends by gently closing your eyes. Regardless of what may be going on in your life today, in your mind's eye, go back 10 years. Get in touch with where you were 
spiritually and emotionally. And imagine that you could send your current self back to that space and time, taking with you what you now know about life. Just take a few minutes to realize how far you have come. Think how much you have learned, grown, and changed. Consider how much you have evolved in the past 10 years, surviving all the changes and challenges that back then may have seemed insurmountable. Now, with your eyes still closed, this time go forward. Regardless of what you may be going on in your life today, and given your current intention to grow and evolve, imagine where you might be spiritually, emotionally, and materially 10, 20, or even 30 years from now, and just see yourself there, handling your life easily and effortlessly, knowing all is well. Indeed, all is well. When you are ready, slowly open your eyes and return to the present moment. Friends, ask yourself, am I willing to step into the unknown to have a daring adventure to trust that with God all things are possible? 
If your answer is yes, then here are a few ideas that comes to us from Reverend Kathy Kuna of Centers for Spiritual Living in DuPage, Illinois. And she writes, if you want, to, you, if you, want you may find it useful to adopt it if you want to keep on stepping out into the unknown and loving it. And the first suggestion is, trust divine mind. The presence of the divine is within you, expressing as you. And this presence loves you unconditionally and forever. It created you in order that it might enjoy life by means of you. It is up to you to give spirit a good time. Secondly, decide on a new way. Decide within yourself on a new thought you want to think, on a new idea you want to see come through in your life. Choose an idea. Thirdly, she says, risk no. The only way to move forward from mediocrity to greatness is to take a risk. Risk by daring to dream big. Risk your self-imposed limitations by thinking grand thoughts. Risk changing not only what you think others think about you, but what you think about yourself. Risk thinking, doing, and being a new improved you. Fourthly, change your thinking. You change your thinking one thought at a time. Take a look at where you stop, where you step back, or where you have been unwilling to go. This is simply facing what you have believed to be true for you, what has been safe, or what gives you a sense of security. Visualize yourself succeeding beyond your previous limited ideas. This is replacing the old with the new. And then five, face and replace. What you think about, you bring about. Where your mental energy goes is what comes into your life. Who wants less good, less health, less love, fewer opportunities to succeed? No one. Deep within, every human has the desire to succeed in being, having, and doing the best they are capable of even more than we can yet imagine. And finally, she says, practice, practice, practice. This does take practice. It is simple, but not always easy. Being self-aware is much more challenging than just staying in the old rut of living a safe, boring life. If you made it to the end with the watch or ring switched, you can change it back now. <laughs> so friends, as we conclude our journey this morning, you deserve to think highly of yourself in ways that uplift and support you in your life. You are up to the challenge. Step out into the unknown and love it. I leave you with a quote from the Buddha. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. The mind is everything. What we think, we become. Namaste.